What's up you guys, Nick here, and today I wanted to go over some basic bird calls that you'll hear in your yard or when you're out on the trails. Really this video was a build off of my previous video, five basic bird calls you'll hear in your yard, and I'll link to that so you guys can check it out. But really I was thinking about the birds that I went over there and realized that, you know, there's a ton that we messed out on. And so without further ado, the first one that I want to go into is the Eastern Towhee. Now the Eastern Towhee is in a family of birds known as Towhees, and the Eastern Towhee is well seen on the eastern half of the United States. I'd say the cutoff is really the Great Plains, but you'd otherwise be able to find it during different parts of the year as far south as Texas and as far north as Maine and even some parts of Canada. Now when you're looking and sort of envisioning is this an area where I could see an Eastern Towhee, kind of envision some, some thicket or some brush almost similar to a wren. The towhee is in the sparrow family. It's a larger ground dwelling sparrow. And so you'll often see it hanging low to the ground and not very high up in the trees. And so just sort of close your eyes and envision maybe you're seeing some brush, a little bit of thicket, and you hear this call. And I would really say that that is the quintessential classic call for an Eastern Towhee. And it's so classic, it has its own mnemonic device. Mnemonic devices are really just associating words to noises that these birds make. And I think it's the greatest way to make a bird call click. And so the mnemonic device for Eastern Towhees is drink your tea. It's really more like drink your tea, 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 tea. Drink your tea, 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 tea. So let's listen again and see if you can pick that up. All right, it's there. All right, we can kind of see it. And so that's the Eastern Towhee. Envision some thickets or some brush, but know that really at different points of the year, it will be as far south as Texas and as far north as New York. Those more northern states, we're gonna get the Eastern Towhee in the summertime. Really the southeast and the mid-Atlantic is going to have the Eastern Towhee year round. And that southern parts like Texas might have the eastern towhee during periods in the winter. Now the next bird we're going to go into is such a classic, I don't even want to give it away in the beginning. Just maybe envision you're in your yard, you're walking throughout your neighborhood. This is a bird that's hugely popular. Again, the split is really the Great Plains, but it's year-round in all of the eastern half of the United States states and all the way up into Canada. So just envision you're in your yard and you might hear this. that bring back any memories? Oftentimes, when people hear this bird call, they know. They know that they've heard it before, but they can't exactly place what it was, and oftentimes that's because bird calls exist in the background of our lives. We're not always hunting down and looking to find the source of the noise, but we know that we've heard it before, and this bird call is the Northern Cardinal. Now, I would say that while Northern Cardinals make a few different calls, this is really the most classic, and there's no beautiful mnemonic device associated with it, but what I like to do is woo it, woo it, woo it, chew, chew, chew. So one more time, it's woo it, woo it, woo it, chew, chew, chew. Let's see if you guys can hear it. It works out. And so you can see that, you know, maybe the mnemonic device isn't perfect and sound off in the comments if you guys can come up with one that you think sounds a little more accurate. Uh, but it's really the sequence of maybe three or four wits and then three or four chews. Uh, now, I did want to go over one other bird call with the Cardinal because I hear it all the time. It's not exactly their quintessential song, but I think it's really important for making that identification. And that is the tick of a Cardinal. And it goes a little bit like this. So you can tell it's very different than what we were listening to before. It's this sharp and high tink. Tink, 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 tink. And oftentimes you'll hear cardinals making these noises just back and forth to each other, around in your yards. And it's a quick way to pick up, you know, I know this isn't the classic call, it's a much shorter, abbreviated call that a bird is making. You're not exactly sure what it is. It's this tink that is pretty much exclusively associated with 
the Northern Cardinal. And so when it comes to the Cardinal, what I really want to stick with you guys is the Wuit and Chew, and then also it's Tink. Neither of them sound perfect. Again, I'm open to some other words. I was trying to put something together here for this video, but it's this tink noise that we'll hear very frequently, and the wit and chew is the most classic call. Now, the next bird that I want to get into is the song sparrow. Now, this is a hugely popular bird. You can find it on the East Coast, the West Coast, all throughout Canada, and even up into a little bit of Alaska. And now this bird is sort of a smaller brown bird, but it's really noticeable based on its heavily streaked chest with this darker brown orb in the center. And you'll hear its call pretty regularly, I think especially in the summertime when we're out walking outside more often. You don't have to be deep in the woods to find this, really, even just around your neighborhood or in your own backyard. I think you have a really good chance of hearing a song sparrow. And there's, again, no perfect mnemonic device, but the way that I sort of keep track of song sparrows is that they often count off in the beginning one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, followed by a trill, and then maybe a few more counts there at the end. I think it may make more sense if we just close our eyes and listen. So in there we have one, two. That's the trill again. Did you get that? One, two, three. Trill. Now I know that this one moves around a lot. It's very inconsistent uh, and really I would say even more so than any of the birds we've covered in this video or the previous, but because it is such a common bird and that you will see it in so many different places, I think if we can begin to pick out sort of the main body of the song, it will help us to be able to differentiate when we're out in the field or sitting in our own backyard exactly what we're listening to. Now really it's this count off in the beginning, a one, two, or one, two, three, before this trill at the end, and it's a pretty characteristic trill um, that is the most readily available way to differentiate a song sparrow from any other bird that you might hear in your yard. And now the last bird that I want to go over with you guys today is one that you might see when you're out camping, sitting around the fire, it's getting dark outside, and you're with some friends. And this bird is really, again, the cutoff sits right around the Great Plains area, but it's found year-round really up into Canada, and even if you dip down a little bit there into Washington and Oregon, you'll be able to hear this bird. It's calling at night, and so you might begin to think, is this an owl of some sort? And it is. You know, I actually talked about this call very briefly in an earlier video, so you guys can check that out if you're interested, but this is going to be the barred owl. Now, I choose the barred owl because it has a very characteristic call and a really solid mnemonic device. Now, the mnemonic device for the barred owl is who cooks for you, who cooks for all. I've heard it phrased a couple different ways, but that's the one that really sticks with me. It says who cooks for you. And so let's give it a call and see if you guys can pick it up. Could you hear it? Let's see. And so it's not perfect. It's sort of this booming, echoing noise, but it, it does begin to mimic, and, and it's pretty repetitive, this who cooks for you, who cooks for all. Now, I like to exaggerate the all, maybe the owl doesn't always, but uh, this is really the, the quickest way to identify what owl you're listening to. I think this is a good one to learn because not many birds are calling or singing at night. It's primarily owls, and this is a really different owl tone that you can hear in a lot of different places year-round, and you're able to pick it up because it has a very clear mnemonic device. And so that's it. Four more bird calls that you guys can add to your repertoire. I really hope this video was helpful, and if you feel like I missed out any birds that, that you would like to learn or that you feel like you see in your yard all the time but you don't have the call down, please comment down below. I'd be happy to make another video. You guys can follow us on Instagram at stopandlisten.channel. And if you really enjoyed this video, I would hugely appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe. It really goes a long way. Thank you.